So we're getting a lot of uh, uh, food calls. We're moving into the time slot. It's 41 minutes after the hour. It's WABC in New York. It's Bob. Welcome to the program, Bob. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, I just wanted to ask you, what natural substances, foods, herbs, whatever, have the strongest bacteria-killing effect? Garlic is amongst the most potent of the antibiotics. As a matter of fact, it was long known through the ages as Russian penicillin. I don't know if you know that raw garlic. Uh, there are compounds in garlic that are still unknown, that are potent, potent antibacterials that are still, that have still not, not yet been delineated in garlic. Garlic is the number one of all that I know of that I'd recommend. And so uh, are you suffering from some kind of bacterial infection? Uh, yes, chronic. I, and nothing seems to work. I'm sorry, say that again. Which illness? Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Well, that's a horse of a different color because we know the etiology of that one. I mean, you were infected by the tick. Is that how it happened? I guess so, yes. Well, you are on natural, you're on uh, chemical antibiotics at, at, at this point. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, several times for years, and they haven't worked. What is your diet like? Uh, I eat organic vegetables, you know, some chicken, some fish. I don't eat a lot of pasta. Um, you know, uh... Are you a big sugar eater? Uh, I do eat uh, cookies occasionally, yeah. I would eliminate a any sugar with any kind of a bacterial infection because you're feeding the bacteria. Very important you eliminate sugar in your diet. How, how big are you on dairy? Uh, I don't eat dairy at all. Well, I think you're doing all you can do. I would definitely look into adding garlic to the diet, and particularly many people hate it. They can't stand it. But there's an easy way to take it. The most important thing to remember about garlic is try to buy organic garlic, number one. Don't don't eat any of the garlic coming in from China. It's poison. I try never to eat any foods that are from China. None. They're all toxic at one level or another. I mean, this has been one of the greatest upsets in American history, which is the large number of toxic foods coming in from China. Seafood in particular is really dangerous. But you can get organic garlic. You have to crush the garlic to release the, the uh, beneficial properties of the garlic. So you crush the garlic. If you don't want the taste of it, put it in some warm olive oil, not hot olive oil. And put the crushed garlic in a very small amount of warm olive oil in a frying pan and just put it over your food. It's, it's incredible. I did it last night. It turned me around, even though, I mean, a cold is a viral, not a bacterial infection. But usually bacterial infections are secondary to viral infections. That's what usually follows a, a viral infection. You notice when you get a cold, you'll often then get some kind of bacterial infection like a, uh, a, strep, a strep throat or whatever, sinusitis, bacterial. So then you have to treat the bacterial part of the uh, of the assault. And the body, you know, gets hit twice, viral and then bacterial. So you're going to come back with the antibacterials and the antiviral. There are no antivirals that we know of other than vitamin C, which brings me back to something I forgot to tell you about. And the time is very short. Dr. Cathcart, who elucidated the bowel tolerance theory of vitamin C, very, very important. He died a few years ago. He was a great friend of mine. Loved him. He explained it to me in the 1970s. Here's how it works. Many of you have tried vitamin C for cold, say, ah, it doesn't work, it's nonsense. You're wrong. You're probably taking 500 milligrams in a tablet. First of all, the tablets are inactive. Most of them are junk. They're nostrums. You have nothing in there. Uh, I use powdered vitamin C from a reputable supplier. That's number one. Powdered vitamin C, very important. Number two, you have to take the right amount. What's the right amount? Cathcart discovered the sicker you are, the sicker you are, the more vitamin C you can take without developing bowel intolerance, which means gas. So when you're healthy, you can take about one gram or a thousand milligrams, let's say, and you won't get any of that gassy feeling or pass gas, to be honest with you. But if you're very sick and you feel a cold coming out of a flu, you'll notice you can take a lot more. You're not going to get the gas effect. You're not going to get the bowel intolerance. And you keep titrating the vitamin C till you get the gas or the bowel intolerance. And that's the level that, that you need. Generally, to make it easy, a flat teaspoon of vitamin C powder is 4 grams or 4,000 milligrams. And if you've got a severe cold or a flu, you try 4,000 milligrams every hour in applesauce 
or a juice, I can guarantee you in four to twelve hours you're gonna you're gonna get on top of it. And then the most important thing is to come off it slowly. You can't drop it off to zero. You're gonna get a scurvy like reaction. You've got to drop it back slowly down to your maintenance dose of between five hundred milligrams and a thousand milligrams or a gram a day. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. 